Hi folks, John with the Wingman Woman 5 channel. Today we're going to be talking about personalizing and adding a little bit of mojo to your firearm or your air gun. So, stick around. Hi folks, welcome back. If you follow along on my channel for any length of time, you know that on my other social media accounts, Instagram and Facebook, that I post a lot of artwork. For years I've been doing a lot of biography, which it's just a fancy word for wood burning. When I was a young kid, my father introduced me to wood burning. And he would burn big game animals, upland birds, on shotgun stocks, on rifle stocks. And it really kind of piqued my interest in delving into that sort of art. So over the years I've been doing it, and of course the technology has changed over the years, and I'll introduce you to what I'm currently using to do the tasks that I'm going to show you. But I really took my art um, to a different level by taking this one course, and I have to give them a shout out. It is Betty Edwards, and the course is Learning to Draw on the Right Side of Your Brain. Just an awesome course for all the folks that feel that they're not artistic, that they can't do it. Yes, you can. And she guides you through this in this course that she has. She has a DVD and a book. I'll leave links in the video description below. I don't make any money off this. I just believe in the product so much. And I want to see people just express themselves the best way that they can. So let's cut away. And I'll show you what I did on this air gun, and I'll take you through the process. Okay, first thing you want to do is pick out your artwork. And that's going to vary depending on your likes and your dislikes. If you're doing it as a commission for somebody. But um, I chose to put, like, my channel logo. I wanted to do some stempling. And I really love the Old West, so I wanted to do something that would incorporate all that. And then, let me flip it around. Credit here to Sam Larson for this art piece. Just awesome. I love that double exposure image. Now, this image as well is just basically some Western wallpaper border. And I just took that image. And then I transferred it over, and we're going to be talking about that now. First thing you're going to want to do is prep the wood. Now, this one originally had a dark kind of walnut stain on it. I don't think it had like a lacquer. If it did, it was real thin. And you're going to have to sand off all the lacquer. You do not want to wood burn with any sort of coating on the wood. It's going to be toxic. It's going to give off all sorts of just bad fumes. Not going to be good. So you want to sand and prep the wood the best that you can. Now with sanding, I first started off with a rough sandpaper, probably about 100 grit, 120. I really didn't want to gouge the wood too bad. This is really soft wood that we're looking at right here. And then once I had gotten all the finish off, then I started to go with finer grits of sandpaper. So when you're doing your wood burning project, what you want to do is get the wood as smooth as possible. It's really going to make it a lot easier to do your burn with it. About a year ago, maybe a year and a half, I started really getting into wood burning again after I had laid off it for a few years. And I started doing some research on what would be some of the best units that were out there. So after doing some careful research, following some fellow YouTubers out there that had biography channels, I chose the Optima One Dual Burner. And I must say that I really like this machine. One, it's temperature regulated. I can control the temperature. It has a toggle switch so I can run two pens, not at the same time, but I can switch back and forth. Makes a lot easier when I'm doing these projects. And with them, 
they have a ton of different what they call nibs to use. Once you found your art piece, you're going to want to transfer it over to whatever medium that you're going to be using, whether it's a gun stock, whether it's basswood, whether it's birch, I mean, fill in the blank. So once you find your art, you're going to print it out. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm just going to tell you how I do it that works best for me. I use some carbon transfer paper, and then I tape down my image with the carbon transfer paper behind it, and then I actually draw over the image and transfer it to the wood. Once I have my images transferred over to the wood, then it's decision time. What sort of nib am I going to use for the project? Now, a lot of people starting out like to do heavy line work. And that looks good like when you're first starting out. It almost looks a little bit like a coloring book type image when you're done uh, with your art piece. Over the years, I've learned to start shying away from doing heavy line work and start doing more realistic shading and contouring with the nibs to produce a more photorealistic uh, image. I still have a lot to learn, but it's coming along and I'm really happy with the progress that I made. Shading, just like in drawing, is everything. Once you have your image, and we'll use this buffalo image, you want to start shading it in to give it a little bit of life to it. Same thing with the image that I used on the backside with the arrowhead. Shading is your best friend. Now, don't worry about mistakes. Sometimes your hand's going to slip. Sometimes you're just going to hold the heat for too long and you might burn over the line or it might burn a little bit too deep. Well, don't worry about that. You can clean up a lot of your artwork with either an X-Acto knife or some sandpaper and then you can go back and clean up your lines. Now for the stempling, what I did was I actually freehand the whole part of the stempling project and I used a 1 8 ball nib. So I took a pencil, I freehand drawn where I wanted to go. That way it was even on the stock. It looked even because trying to put paper and carbon transfer paper over that would have been really hard. So I took my pencil, drew out the outline of where I wanted to go, and then I started stempling down the center line. So I had it straight. And then I started going from there, both left and right. Once I was done stempling, then I took one of my shading nibs and then I started to do heavy heat over that to fill in all the spaces in between the stempling to kind of give it a more robust look. I sanded it and then I did it again. With all my artwork done, what I did was I took some light sandpaper, probably about 300 grit, 400 grit, and some 40 steel wool and then I just started buffing everything out all over the wood just to take off all the high spots and just to clean up my art a little bit. Once I got everything all cleaned up, then I went back with one of my nibs, whether it's lining or shading, and then I just, what we call, tightened everything up. I tightened up all the edges, all the contours, did a little bit more shading. And I knew once I stained it, that it would really make the artwork pop. Let's talk about staining. You're gonna ask, what sort of stain did I use? Well, I used like an early American type, I think it was Minwax stain. And I gave it I believe two coats. You can use anything out there. There's poly shade. There's all sorts of stuff that you can use. And that's the cool thing about art. You, Whatever you do, that's your mojo. That's part of you. 
So with that, after the stain dried, I lightly buffed it again with some steel wool, the 4-0 steel wool. And then I took a uh, rag with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on it and I cleaned it all off. And then I lacquered it. I use a lacquer called DEF and I used a semi-gloss and I sprayed it, let it dry, then I steel wooled it. I think I sprayed it like five times doing that process. Spraying, steel wool, clean it up, repeat. And then I let it sit for a couple days before I installed everything again. Here's a quick pyography tip. Now, I know we're guys, I know we like to go big or stay home, but with any sort of wood burning, you wanna to try to work with the lowest possible heat that you can, because if you go in just blazing, it's turned up to the highest setting, you are gonna destroy your project, I guarantee it. Start out with a minimal amount of heat, that way you can get your fine lines, your shading, your detail that you want. You can always incrementally turn it up as needed, depending on what sort of pen or nib that you're gonna use. Just a quick tip out there. Now, a lot of the um, Walnut Hollow entry level pens that are out there now do have temperature settings on it, unlike the ones that I used to use in the old day. Still, same thing applies. Start out low heat, because different wood is gonna work differently with heat. Pine, fir, spruce, generally we stay away from that in the wood burning genre, just because it's high resin. And anytime you hit a growth ring, you always wind up, it burns hotter, and then you wind up getting these like balls. So if you're trying to burn a straight line, you're gonna just see an expansion in that line. Stay away from pine, fir, spruce. I like basswood. I'm not sure what type of wood this was, but I'll tell you what, it burned really well. It's really soft, I was surprised. But uh, walnut's gonna work good. Your harder woods are probably gonna take a little bit more heat because of the density of the fiber. You're gonna have to play with it. I would recommend if you can get a hold of some test pieces, doing some swatches before you start a project. That would save you a lot of time and heartache. Well, we just did a quick overview of what I did to add my own personal mojo to this air gun. Now, in a history aspect of it, frontiersmen, plainsmen, mountain men, First Nations people, they always personalized their firearms, whether it be a musket, whether it be a repeater, and they made it their own. So the challenge is don't be afraid to church something up, add a little bit of your own personal mojo to it and make it your own. And I look forward to handing this down to grandchildren, great grandchildren years from now and telling stories about it. With that, if you like this content, if you like this topic, leave a comment down below and I'll do my very best to maybe do some more in-depth biography videos. It's a passion of mine. I love doing it and I think I have a lot to share on that topic. So I'll leave links to everything we talked about in the video description down below. Please look there uh, for all your needs and I thank you so much for watching. And folks, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.